Hey everybody, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate the GMAT, and I just have a quick freebie for you, a solution to one of the more challenging questions from the official guide, the GMAT official guide. It's a question my students ask me a lot. I am actually literally in the throes of recording hundreds of videos. I've decided to record a solution video for every single question in this latest edition of the official guide because uh, kind of a hidden secret, right? I mean, I'm not kind of revealing anything that you don't already know. The book's answer explanations are not very good. They're way too academic. They're not always the best way of solving questions. And so I assign these questions to my students in my course and they're always asking me, hey, is there a better way to do this? And, and so I just decided to literally give you the best solution to every single one of them coming soon, but here is an example of one of the videos that I'm in the process of, of working on, and I think you'll see that it's so much more helpful. Now, for the purposes of copyright, right, I can't reproduce the question, so you'll be able to deduce and figure out what the question is by watching this video, but hopefully you already have the GMAT official guide. If not, I've posted a link to it kind of below this video. You should definitely get a copy of it. It's an invaluable resource uh, for preparing for the GMAT, but whether you have it or not. If you have it, definitely in the title of the video, you see the question and the page number. And so you flip there and you can follow along. If not, you can just try to do your best to deduce what's going on in the question. I know you'll learn something as well. And I think the key takeaway is, are there uh, kind of better ways, less formulaic, less traditional, kind of boring ways of solving the questions to still get a right answer? I think you'll see that the answer is yes. So enjoy this solution to a challenging question from the GMAT official guide. Here we have a percent change question, but a percent change of what? Of a ratio to another ratio. In other words, they want the ratio of price per share to earnings per share to be compared from last year to this year. So we kind of need to figure out these numbers here. And the best way to do that is to make up numbers, right? So what is the K percent increase? Again, as long as K is greater than M, you can make up any numbers you want. I'm gonna choose 50% for K, 25% for M. And we also need a starting point from last year. When we're dealing with percents, a great starting point is 100. So let's just assume that the price per share last year was 100. Earnings per share last year, 100. So what's the ratio of PPS to EPS last year? Just one to one, which is 1.0. So that's the ratio, one to one. A good easy starting point to calculate things like percent change what then is the price per share this year? Well, if the price per share increased by 50%, pretty easy math, right? 150%. Compared to what? Compared to earnings per share that only went up 25%. Again, because we're using 100 as a reference point, that math is easy. It goes up to 125%. That ratio, 150 to 125, both divisible by 25, so that's the same thing as 6 fifths. I'm going to convert that to a decimal because the percent change will be easier. 6 over 5 goes in 1, 1 1.2, right? So that ratio is 1.2. So what's the percent change? Reference your percent change formula if you need to, but the percent increase is the net increase, which is 0.2, compared to the starting point, which is 1, 1 1.0. Helps if you have such an easy starting point. Again, don't be afraid to let you know, PPS and EPS equal the same thing. So that means the percent increase is just 0.2 times 100%. Obviously, it's a 20% increase. And now we just take our made-up values, plug them into the answer choices, and let's see which one matches. K over M, obviously 50 over 25 uh, is 2, does not equal 20%. K minus M, 50 minus 25 is 25, does not equal 20%. 100 times K minus M, so that's 2,500, compared to 100 plus K, 150, that's not going to be 25 or 20%, right? Because 15 goes into 25, not, not quite two times. So that's not going to equal 20%. Uh, whereas answer choice D, 100 times 25, so 2,500 
over 100 plus m is 125. Yeah, now 125 does go into 250 two times exactly, so that will equal 20%. Answer choice D is correct. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I hope it cleared up any confusion you may have had about that particular question. If you want solutions to all of the other questions in the GMAT official guide, head over to dominatethegmat.com. Check out one of our courses. As I said, these are now included with the courses, certain packages. But for now, I'll leave you with that. I am getting back to recording hundreds of more videos so that I can bring them to you and empower you to dominate the GMAT.